So on Friday, the Liverpool Philharmonic Hall cancelled the live podcast recording of Ian Dale's podcast for the many, which along with former Home Secretary Jackie Smith had the Labour MP Lisa Nandy as special guest. Now, if you're not aware of him, Ian Dale is a radio talk show host with aspirations of becoming a politician. And you might have heard the show on LBC or other outlets where he pops up as a political commentator and such like. Now, the reason he's provoked some controversy here is that previously he was the co-owner and managing director of Bite Back Publishing, which in 2016 published a book called Hillsborough Untold by Norman Betterson, a former inspector in the South Yorkshire Police at the time of the 1989 Hillsborough disaster. Incredibly, and not without its own controversy, Betterson later became chief constable of Merseyside Police in 1988. So let's first take a look at why Betterson is such a controversial figure on Merseyside and why Ian Dale is naive in his belief that the Philharmonic Hall was wrong to cancel his podcast show. Now, Betterson was a Hillsborough in an off-duty capacity, but he was integral to the police cover-up in the immediate aftermath of the disaster. He was directly involved in an internal review group within the South Yorkshire Police team. Maria Eagle MP would describe this in Parliament as a black propaganda unit, which would start by shifting the blame from the police to the fans. They did this by altering witness statements, which Betterson claims he never did and never ordered. But the sheer amount of times this happened means that there is not a credible argument suggests that he was unaware of it. Betterson would search for keywords in witness statements related to fans' behaviour, which included drunk, unruly, pushing, shoving, fighting, violent and ticketless. He was also given the job of searching the police computer to find witnesses who had given the most emphatic evidence alleging Liverpool supporters misbehaving. These were all desperate attempts to blame Liverpool fans for the failings of the South Yorkshire Police. Betterson also went to Parliament in November 1989 to present a compilation video to a group of MPs at the invitation of Michael Shearsby, a Conservative MP who represented the Police Federation. After that meeting, Betterson reported to the Chief Constable Peter Wright that two Conservative MPs had promised to attack the Taylor Report, which was critical of the police. The compilation video included scenes of people dying with Norman Betterson providing a voiceover. Now, some MPs who have seen the video describe it as propaganda for the police, looking to imbue the narrative that it was Liverpool supporters, not the police, that were to blame. Make no mistake, Norman Betterson was a key figure in the police cover-up in the aftermath of Hillsborough. 97 people were eventually found to be unlawfully killed and not a single person has spent a night in jail. So... It's hardly surprising that feelings on the subject remain highly sensitive on Merseyside. Now, Ian Dale has appeared in Liverpool before, but most people were not aware of his link to Betterson's book, which further pushes the narrative to try and take power away from the survivors and the families of the 97 and their search for justice. But instead of trying to understand the issue... Dale has shown his ignorance on the subject. In a statement reacting to the show's cancellation, he quotes his promoter, saying that Hillsborough support groups and families were threatening to disrupt the event, which just isn't true. He claims to have never been anything less than supportive to those that were affected at Hillsborough. But again, this isn't true. He provided a platform to someone who was key to denying the same families and survivors justice. So then he tries a different tactic, saying that the Philharmonic is in receipt of public funds, estimating that the receipt in the region of £3 million in recent years. Again, this isn't true. It received a grant of £750,000 as part of Arts Council England's capital investment programme used to enhance the building. Now, Ian Dale is getting the Philharmonic Hall, the venue, confused with the Philharmonic Society, basically the orchestra, and he's gone off on the deep end without knowing the basic facts, which should be important for someone of influence working in the media with aspirations of transitioning into full-time politics. Facts matter, Ian. Then he tries a different angle, stating that over 250 tickets have been sold and worrying about the effect that this might have on the local hospitality industry. Now, this one is particularly bizarre, considering that Dale has previously commented that he finds Liverpool a ghastly city. He wondered why the council had not spent money redeveloping the outskirts, oblivious to the fact that a Tory party, a party that he seeks to be MP for, has slashed local government funding to Liverpool to breaking point as part of their austerity ideology. It's this removal from reality and actions and consequences that seems to be a common thread with Ian Dale. 
He claims that local businesses won't thank the Philharmonic for their spinelessness, which again shows a total lack of awareness of how the city works. Then, predictably enough, he goes down the route of crying about being cancelled. Oblivious to the fact that he has his own nationally broadcast radio show, a substantial so social media following, a blog that is presumably read by people, multiple tour dates and an upcoming live residency in Edinburgh where he's joined by some of the highest profile names in politics. He claims that the Philharmonic gave in to the mob or a couple of Twitter trolls and this is another example of his ignorance when it comes to local feeling on the subject. And you know what? That's fine. I don't expect him to know. He's got a little experience of the city and in 2011 he said he doesn't want to return here. So I don't expect him to have the same feelings on the subject as me or many other people in the city. I mean, I don't mind that he's published books by Norman Bettison or even worse, Kelvin McKenzie. If that's the direction that he's taken in life, then fair enough. No one has to be sensitive to things they have little knowledge of and we all have different things that we consider a priority. However, this does not give him a free pass to publish whatever he wants without any kind of consequence. He talks about freedom of expression, which also what happened here. And as a Tory, you'd think he'd love seeing free market capitalism in action in real time with the Philharmonic deciding that it's better for business to give Ian Dale the elbow. A private commercial venue does not owe you anything and it's got no responsibility to give you a platform. I'm guessing that your passion for being a defender of free speech is a newfound position, one that you didn't seem to have when you assaulted an elderly man who was peacefully protesting in Brighton in 2013. It's fine for you to cancel people, Ian, to restrict their voice, should your opinion be the only one that matters? And instead of showing a shred of humility by holding his hands up and understanding that his commercial choices in the past have restricted his commercial choices in the future, he instead cries about being cancelled. No one is being cancelled. The rest of your tour dates exist. You can rearrange your show in a different city. You can do the same show online. Your words will still be published and heard. This power of having a voice was denied to the families and survivors of Hillsborough during part of the orchestrated cover-up that Norman Bettison was part of, a person that you have provided a platform for. Your actions have consequences. Stop crying, Ian Dale.